Hi, I'm James Grant, uh, Director of uh, Global Accounts at Amadeus and I have the, the privilege of looking after FCM. Um, and I'm very happy today to be hosting this um, panel discussion for Think around the great debate that's never really gone away. Um, what's the value of TMCs in 2023? Um, I'm really happy to be joined by this illustrious panel of global and regional uh, leaders at FCM, uh, many people I've worked with for, for a long time. Um, and I think, first of all, just the first question really to all of you is how many of you have heard these sort of phrases in the past uh, or the past, past few months? All TMCs are the same. There's really nothing out there when it comes to TMC options. And how do you really prove your value over your peers and competitors? How many of you have heard uh, have these questions, including yes, myself yeah. as well, right? So that's what we're going to sort of get into a little bit today as, as a panel discussion. And I think um, there's, there's two real fundamental questions we have to answer today. And that's what, what is the value of a TMC? Um, and how do you differentiate yourselves against your competitors? And how do you differentiate yourselves for your buyers? Um, I think some of you know I've come from a, a TMC background as well, and, and these questions were around when I was there over a decade ago, so they never go away. Um, so I'm sure we'll be having this debate again in, in 10 years' time. But I'm going to start with a very easy question, and I'm going to pick on Billy and Mel first, because they're the people I know the least, but I'm going to give you the easiest all question. Right, I'll give these guys the tougher <laughs> question, right? So first of all, um, do you think all TMCs are the same? No, I don't. I think what is the same is that we like three-letter words to make our, brand, our company <laughs> names, but, uh, uh, and obviously the same that, that we offer a service in travel management um, offering. But really, at the end of the day, we're a service industry. And I think, you know, an interesting question would be, do all service industry providers get asked the same question? Like banks, for instance, or, you know, I think that's challenging um, as a service provider, like how do you differentiate yourself? But, you know, at the end of the day, yes, we do, because everyone has a unique value proposition, service, product offering, a different culture. And it's really at the end of the day, how a customer determines what the best fit or value is in how they pick a service provider. Um, and I actually think at the end of the day, if a customer goes to market, which, you know, a lot of our customers do, they're going and they're questioning us on all of our different aspects of our service, our offering, our value, our products. And if they didn't feel that there was differentiation, then they would just go to market with a price option. So yes, I think there is differentiation for sure. Yeah, and I, I would follow on from that by saying it's, it's not what we do, it's how we do it, which is the differentiator between the, between the various CMCs. And I think looking at the, the cultural fit, so like how you approach problem solving or service delivery, I think is fundamental. And there's probably not enough, enough time invested in exploring that when people do go to market. You, you generally see that later in the, you know, the RFP stage or while you're going through meetings and things. And I think that that's, it all, it all comes back to how people approach things and what, what they can deliver by being unique. And it, it works for some, it doesn't work for others. And I think that drives people's decisions. Great, good answers. I'm, I'm glad you answered, uh, answered the, 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 the right answer to that question, right? So clearly all TMCs are not the same, right? We, I know this as well. Um, but in your opinions, why do buyers still constantly ask you this question? So maybe to, to Steve first? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that one. Um, well, firstly, I've worked in travel for 20 years, actually. Um, the first 10 was in the leisure side. Yeah. So actually the leisure trip is very much around the travel, the experience, that's what you're buying, yeah. um, you know, that destination and, and, and that type of thing. Whereas a business traveler is traveling to go and do their job, um, whether it's an internal um, meeting, whether it's selling their business. And so the, the trip itself is a means to an end. Yeah. And so I can understand why some people perceive it as a commodity. Yeah. However, what we look to do is wrap the whole of that trip, both pre-trip, during the trip. So. Um, data after the trip, making it as seamless as we can for the traveller and equally for the company to be able to manage that. And um, more so um, over the last few years, demonstrate that duty of care and being that expert to recommend and guide if anything should go wrong. Yeah, so really supporting the traveller all the way through the journey. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I want to challenge a bit mm. your statement, James, because you said, why do they think we are all the same? But I don't think they do, no. because to Mel's point yeah. before, I still think that when they go for an RFP, they are looking for particular suppliers which come with a full range of services, but also the culture. And, uh, you know, being in the service industry, the culture of our people, the service orientation of our people and all of those things have a huge value. And, you know, being like problem solvers and very proactive in our interaction with customers certainly makes a big difference. And I, and I do believe that actually 
buy or see that yeah. a yeah, lot. I agree. I mean, if you think of a, an RFP and the weighting decision on price, mm. you know, it ranges for customers between 10 and 30% yeah. probably of their total RFP when they're looking at value and yeah. reasons. So there's a big chunk, like 70% of that is not related to price. It's yeah. related to product, service, offering, yeah. culture. Mm -hmm. Technology. Yes, I absolutely. Mean, yeah. No, I agree. And I think it's, I mean, travel for me has always been a, a people industry. It's about the people and the service they get. And, and that's, that's never gone away even with the enhancement of technology solutions. So it's, it's, I think you're right, definitely on the cultural side as well. So, OK, so next question. If the main disconnect then between the TMC and buyer is perceived value of TMC services, what needs to change? Is there something wrong or do you just have to maybe, is it a PR problem? Do you have to market yourselves a bit more? I'm going to ask that one to my friend Marcus. <laughs> Thanks, James. I think it's a little bit of both, actually, for it. I mean, as we said, a buyer for these, they're looking to standardize a few things. They're looking to actually compare a different service and everything for it. So they're trying to put us a little bit in the same category as well for this. But I do think they value the different services as well. In a way, we have a PR problem, I agree with this, because everybody come back to saying we issue a ticket. That's yeah. all we do. But when you see the true value for these things, which we probably don't communicate enough, is as my fellow colleagues have said as well, mm -hmm. is actually when something happened, they yeah. approach the problems, how to actually the service going down. And I think a little bit as people are very different. Yeah. If you're saying all humans are the same, it's yeah. a very easy statement to say, but actually we are very different how we approach things, how we do things. Yeah. And I think therefore from a Team C perspective, we as an industry can be better articulate actually how we add value yeah. and some of these scenarios where as an insurance, you don't see it until you really need it. Yeah. Actually, how we're good to deal with these things as well. Yeah. So yes, we do have a bit of a PR problem. We can work on that. Yeah. But I do think a lot of buyers also see the value, as we said it before, of some of these services. Yeah. But, but don't you think that the, the pre presentation of COVID really enhanced the value That's of a TMC? Exactly yeah. going to say like, that. you know, that crisis situation, I think, more than ever helped support the value of a TMC in that, you know, customers more than ever needed guidance, they needed advice, they didn't want to be on hold to airlines yeah. for hours. You know, and I really think that it really helped the industry as a yeah. whole, and yeah. particularly TMCs. And it did reinforce the definition of service as well, because yeah like the lack of people we had just at the back of the recovery showed that our people are actually very important because when they are not on the phone, yeah. then we have problems with service delivery and our customers feel it, you know? No, I think it's, I think your point about COVID was about, as an industry, we're affected by so many things, right? And the COVID was, was a, a massive crisis for all of us, right? But it's almost where the value comes through and the stronger gets strong, I think. It's, it's in terms of certainly being a traveler, it's when I need my travel management company the most. So uh, good point again. Okay, so thanks for that. Um, so to get a sort of macro view, um, we, we probably need to go a little bit more granular. So what are buyers in your regions really asking you guys to, to provide now in terms of service and support? And has that changed as well, sort of post COVID really as well? So a bit of an open question. I don't know who yeah, wants I to think, take that one first. I think we've noticed that after like post COVID, as, as companies were coming back to travel, they incorporated a lot of um, requests for sustainability and how to utilize us to help them achieve their sustainability goals. So I think that's definitely become a, a hot topic. Yeah, it's a big word uh, now in the industry. Yeah. And, I, and I think the, the, the difference between other things that have been requested in the past is they're willing to kind of put their money where their mouth is in, in a lot of instances. So I think that's, that's been a really um, interesting experience. And also the kind of separation of VIP and dedicated service. I think customers have like have appreciated the value that they experienced, you know, over the last few years, and now they're looking to to segment their existing programs to have specialized, dedicated people for certain travelers within their company. So that's definitely on the rise. One of the one of the things in EMEA, um, you know, we've got a large number of countries uh, within the EMEA network, um, and each of the local countries come along with their understanding the nuances and um, we saw that just referencing covid um you know even in germany it wasn't just one country set of rules around how to travel each different state had their own ones it was a nightmare trying to understand that so without that local understanding that local expertise back a couple of years ago um, i don't think we could have helped our customers get through that what we're now finding though is a lot of people exited the uh, the travel industry um, they flipped they pivoted they went into other different businesses 
Um, last summer in EMEA, travel bounced back um, with a vengeance. Probably and quicker actually, than we all thought. Well, at, so. well, yeah. well ahead yeah. of when everybody yeah. was predicting. Yeah. And so one of the things that we were challenged with is how do we recruit and retain our people quick enough? Um, we were pretty aggressive out there, particularly in Europe. But what we looked to lean into was our whole EMEA network and yeah. use our South African colleagues, for example, to support behind the scenes and so quickly get back on top of almost that SLA management, but, but also their they're sort of speaking to us two or three times more per booking now yeah. than they were previously. So just trying to manage that has, yeah. has definitely been one yeah, of the challenges. They want that confidence of you guys and asking the same questions yeah. to reassure them almost. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Situation is very similar in Asia um, because of the diversity of the region and the fact that obviously um, there is a lot of local specificity. So I think what customers want now is definitely the service and the recommendation and all of this expertise that Steve spoke about. But bizarrely, post-COVID, there was also a bit of an interest to kind of go for more technology and, and digital solutions, um, and particularly in markets with high tech adoption, such as China, India, which, as you know, were born with mobile, basically. So it's a bit of a leapfrog in terms of uh, demand and, and interest from the customer standpoint. So we see that definitely coming very strongly. And I think one thing that customers are looking for in Asia is really getting this consistency across all of those very difficult markets, which are basically the nightmare of most travel managers. Like you think of Japan, India, mm. China, you cannot do more specific, you know, and, and I think being able to provide solutions um, to customers around that is, is definitely a big value. Yeah. Okay, to get a macro view, we need to go a little bit more granular. So what are buyers in your regions asking you as a TMC to provide now in terms of service and support? Yeah, I think as um, business has normalised in general post-COVID, not just the travel industry, but all customer businesses, I think customers are really looking for simplicity and ease of booking now. So if we look just post-COVID, there was a lot of complexity in travel. There was, it was quite difficult to make a booking. There were so many rules and regulations around traveling. And a lot of our customers actually implemented really rigid travel policies in order to control duty of care and you know to make sure they understood where people were traveling more so than looking at price and cost and policy compliance. So I think now that we're normalizing, I think customers are now looking to us asking, you know, how do we get back to business normality? How do we make it easy for our travelers again? And let's not forget, like we not only lost a lot of people in our in industry, but a lot of our customers did mm, as well. Sure. So, you know, there's a lot of new travel bookers, there's a lot of new travelers that are making bookings for the first time. So they're really looking to us to, you know, see how can we make that easy process for them and how can we simplify that? Mm, yeah. But I think on the global, if I may add a couple, of the two things always comes up as well on top of saying is actually we never had before. How do you deal with talent? Yeah. So how do you retain talent? Yeah. How you recruit talent yeah. and all this? It has become an industry issue, as I said before, Steve, as well. Yeah. And the second one is actually what's your approach to innovation? Yeah. So people realize that change is going to be more constant, yeah. specifically yeah. during the pandemic. And they're really asking right now, how do you deal with innovation? Yeah. How do we incorporate it in mm -hmm. our programs as yeah. well? It's a very interesting angle coming into the business. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. So after hearing all these um, regional nuances, how do you respond to, from a TMC perspective to that at, at, at a global level? Well, a little bit said, we're trying to, first of all, not decide everything at a global level. We believe in collaboration. So we believe in collaboration with the customers, with our suppliers, among ourselves as well, to see actually what is the best problems we can actually, how to solve the problems best, yeah. I should say, uh, for this. Take some of the innovation aspect of it as well. Mm -hmm. It's impossible for a single individual team to create all innovation. We believe that foster innovation through the teams, through the different regions, and then leverage those knowledge and in industry yeah. insights we get and actually deliver something better to the customer as part of it. And for the serviceability of it, as we said before, is to reinforce a little bit the capabilities we have yeah. and actually the value that the traditional Team C has beyond just issuing ticket as well. There's a lot of additional services we provide to travel programs today, to travelers, which I think is go, becomes a bit unnoticed to them sometimes. Yeah. Good to hear. And I'm glad, I, I guess these guys are your customers as well, right? They are indeed. So. <laughs> <laughs> tough ones, yeah, very tough ones. I know that. <laughs> okay, so we've heard what the buyers want. But what about you? What do you as TMCs want? What are you asking uh, for in the future from your customers as well and your suppliers? 
I think if I start first and then let you fill in for it, for me it's about collaboration. So that's something we realized during the pandemic is that no individual can make travel themselves, not an airline and not a traveler. We need to collaborate for that. And having that transparency and looking for that industry innovation, for me is actually very exciting, but you can't do it alone. So we actually have to make sure we collaborate much more as an industry to do this. But Billy just mentioned before as well, one of the biggest industry challenges we have is sustainability. Yeah. And same thing there, it's not going to be an individual player that's going to solve it. No. We have to solve it as an industry. Yeah. So I'm very excited actually, what we want is much more collaboration in the industry, because yeah. that means we can help our corporate travelers yeah. and we can also help the industry. Yeah. I do believe that you know, partnership is an essential part of what we want to build with customers because um, you know, managing a travel program is not a one-way street. It has to be a collaboration between us and the customer and a mutual engagement toward the success of the program. Um, and I think um, you, know, you were asking what we would ask to our customers and I think it's a, it's a big ask because sometimes uh, when programs are managed through a procurement angle which is only driven by SLA and cost, um, you kind of lose a bit of the, you know, the old value of what we can offer to a customer. And I believe that, again, partnership is probably the only way we can get those things through. Like we were talking about technology earlier, but the best way to get technology adopted is to have a program which is completely embedded within the company itself. Because how do you get someone to download a mobile app if they don't even know that there is one, you know, and all of that needs to work together. And I think, yeah, that's, that's to me the, the most essential request we have toward our customers is mm. building this interaction. It's also such an emotional topic for the traveler. Yes. So, you know, and, and what we find with that partnership, with really strong partnerships, that collaboration for change management. Yeah. So we're investing a lot in tech, for example, yeah. but it's not to take away from the service mm -hmm. that our people support. So that, that's probably the advantage. We're, we're looking to constantly change and adapt. And we'd encourage our customers to to be clear and directive with yeah, us as well. Yeah, like we understanding can help their value, what, what value is yep. to them, and, and what we can provide in return. Yeah, and you're yeah. effectively managing their policies, right? So it's up yes. to you to make sure they're travelling on the right flights and the right hotel, booking Absolutely. the right hotels, etc. So. Okay, so final question: um, What are you most excited about uh, in terms of the future of travel? What uh, what really? gets you going and keeps you super motivated and keeps you up at night, but in a good way. <laughs> uh, if I could pick a little bit, I'd say actually for, for me, the most exciting part is actually getting people back into the business. Yeah. Actually, we provide a brightness of future, as we call it, for our people in the business and we're bringing more and more people, young people into the business, excited about travel again. So that's by far the most exciting part, I think, in this part. Well, we have the opportunity to rebuild the industry post-COVID. Mm. Mm. You know, we pretty much started from scratch. Yeah. Uh, not only 12 months ago yeah. to rebuild the entire industry. So I think, you know, for me, it's exciting to how can we learn from the lessons of the past and mm. move forward into the future with, yeah. with something different and exciting for, for not mm. only our people, but for our customers yeah. as well. Yeah. For me, what excites me is to make the complicated easy. And, you know, coming from the Asia angle, which again, you know, has a lot of complexity embedded into it. I think coming up with solutions which actually solve problems is super exciting. And I think there's so much more we can do around that. Yeah, I think the, the opportunity that we have to reset a lot of things, I think that's super exciting, yeah. Yeah. you know, and, and really make something better and stronger for the future. I, I definitely agree with that. And crikey, if we survived global financial crisis, <laughs> we've survived what God could throw at us with COVID. We got, I mean, it, it's, I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Aren't we great in this <laughs> So it's just build on it, as, as, yeah, as you guys said. Like yeah. 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 No, thank you. No, thanks for that. I, I, and actually, Steve, I remember a conversation me and you, me, you and Marcus had um, sort of just as COVID hit. And I think you said to me at the time, it's like you guys have got to almost bring your plans that you were looking at five years in five years time now yeah. right, into the business. And I, I certainly have experienced that working with you guys. I think you did, did a, an amazing job. And uh, I think just to wrap up for me, I'm w one of your customers as well. I booked my travel with FCM um, and I definitely see the value of, of having you there, not just on my trip, booking my trip, but 
as, as you say, the whole journey. And I, I know when, you know, if there's a problem, I, I can just pick that phone up and talk to anyone. Is Marcus anyone. your travel consultant? Yeah, <laughs> okay, occasionally. He's not so good at helping me, but, uh, no, but you're, all here to make you're, you're, you're your well. team are really good. And, and again, I saw that during the, the crisis, really, you know, with the unused tickets and, you know, when can I rebook these? And, and just, just the value you, you gave mm. me and, and that end-to-end -end journey process, having you there is, is great. So thank you very much for your support. Thank you for the session today. It's really interesting and uh, look forward to, to continuing the discussion. I'm sure we'll be having this conversation again in, <laughs> yes. in five, ten years' time, right? But, uh, thanks again. Thank thanks, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thanks.